Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Monday morning mountain weather update. My first stop is going to be radar out of the Pacific Northwest, and you can see there is precipitation. This is all part of the, the next storm system, the one that should hold together and bring snow to the Intermountain West, but you can see the rain, the snow there, and it is snowing up at a parts of Whistler. Um, here are the uh, live cams. It's rain at the base elevation, but generally above 6,000 we're seeing um, snowfall up there. You can see that Black Hole Mountain, some snow. Whistler Peak shirt certainly getting snow, 7,100 feet up there. It's coming down pretty good, but just wet at the base area. And there's some snow right there at 7,000 on the Glacier Express. So that's happening now. Let me give you the lay of the land on the, the water vapor satellite imagery. So drier air aloft is oranges and uh, reds, and then your moistures and your whites, your blues. Here's our big storm system spinning here, and there's even a low behind it as well. But this is the storm system that's bringing that precip to the uh, the coastal range of BC. And that's the one that will eventually slide into the Intermountain. Let me just mark this. You've got a little bit of a, some jet support there. Certainly, that's the case here. Now, both of these storm systems will move down and through the Intermountain West, roughly between October 16th and October 19th, maybe even trickling into the 20th. And it does, and that's part of my bullet points, it actually does open the door here behind all of this. So storm system 1016 through 1019 opens the door for more activity to an active pattern even as we approach 1020, 1021. Um, and this should allow for snowmaking um, to begin in, in like parts of uh, Colorado, Loveland, A Basin like to do that, uh, Keystone, because it will bring in colder air and also provide some natural snow out of this type of setup once we get to it. All right, let me just show you what this, uh, what the atmosphere looks like. This is Steamboat, Colorado. So the Northern Mountains time height forecast here. This is through all the vertical layers of the atmosphere. And you read the timeline from right to left on the bottom. So for the next 72 to maybe 80 hours, there's not a lot of humidity. This is looking at relative humidity. Not a lot of humidity in the atmosphere. It's mainly dry. Now, once we get to about the 17th of October, you'll notice there's a little bit more humidity uh, in the atmosphere, and then it would increase uh, even more on the 18th, 19th, as that storm system moves in. So that's what is happening now and what lies ahead. In fact, let me show you these odds. So snowfall forecast, 10 to 15 day snow forecast. This is Yellowstone Lake up in Wyoming. And notice what happens. The activity, the snow chances all go up. In fact, there is snow accumulation in this forecast for Jackson, Yellowstone Lake after about 1017. All, look, at the, look at the chances and the odds all go up of accumulating snow all the way through the end of October. So that's a definite change. You know, the last 15 to 20 days have been dominated by high pressure with abnormally warm, dry air. But finally, we're starting to see a shift in that. And here is the jet stream forecast by close of business today. So look at the dip in the jet sitting over parts of the Gulf of Alaska and the Northern Pacific. There it is by 1015. And here it comes, 1016. You can see that dip in the jet, a trough of low pressure, moves into the west. There's 10, 1017, 1018. Now the low sinks a little further to the south in today's forecast, and it might actually get cut off. But you can see it now sliding through Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and then it slips into Colorado, New Mexico. And it takes a couple of days for it to move out. And then the next setup hits the West Coast, the next dip in the jet by 1022 and 1023. So it does open that door to more activity. All right, looking at the, uh, the forecast, radar, and also satellite here. So by 530 this afternoon, here's the setup. You can see the precip up in the Pacific Northwest. Let me uh, throw this into the, uh, the future. Here we go, 10.15 in the morning, 10.15 in the afternoon. Now, the, here comes the precip. There it is. It moves into the Intermountain West, rain and snow, depending on elevation. Um, this is kind of the leading edge of the storm system. So watch what happens by uh, Thursday afternoon. And notice behind it, there, it kind of rebuilds. The second piece, or the main piece of the storm system, moves in with lower snow levels. In other words, a lower rain snow line and just more snow accumulation. And then that one's more impressive. It actually starts to spin up in that, that low I showed you at jet stream level, that dip in the jet, um, moves through Utah, Wyoming, and then through Colorado. Now, it's not quite as impressive in Colorado as it was yesterday, but this is where that low kind of gets cut off. 
over the four corners, New Mexico, Colorado, just kind of sits there. And then it kind of refires into 1020. And then it moves through Colorado and out. But look at the northern tier, Pacific Northwest. The activity continues up there all the way through 1022 and 1023. All right, snow forecast looks like this. There is snow accumulation. Again, this is mainly 1016 and to 1020, somewhere in that zone. But you can see a few inches of accumulation over parts of Colorado, over parts of uh, Utah, from uh, Bryant Head all the way to the Wasatch and to the High Uintas, five or six inches potentially through Jackson and Grand Targhee, up to Yellowstone, Yellowstone Lake, up into parts of Big Sky. Uh, the, the, the bulk of the accumulation is where we're going to see uh, you know, additional storm systems roll through into parts of B.C. I mean, we could see several inches up there at Whistler, all the way down to Baker. Um, I mean, look at, look at north up there in the parts of Marmot Base, and we could see several inches of snow. So um, that's what we've got. That's what I see all the way through uh, 1023. We're finally starting to see the pattern shift, you know, and this first storm system really opens the door. And again, that extended snow forecast for Yellowstone Lake, I mean, there are snow chances that continue all the way through the end of October. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.